Mr. Romano, hello. You are author of Dans l'ombre du Muezzin, a controversial memoir. Introduce yourself and tell us what the book is about. Yes, I'm Frank Romano, author of Dans l'ombre du Muezzin, uh, which is a translation uh, of Storm over Morocco. I am uh, Maître de Conférence, which is associate uh, tenured professor at the University of Paris West. And uh, inspired by this experience, Presently, I organize dialogues and demonstrations for peace in Israel and Palestine. Returning to Dans l'ombre du Muezzin, what inspired you to write this book? This is a, this is a, a, a true story that took place uh, in, during the 70s. When I was a student at the Sorbonne, just next door in philosophy, um, and uh, however, um, well, even though I was hypnotized by the, by the the intensity of the culture, intellectual culture, and the culture in, in Paris, I was also disillusioned by living in the big city coming from the country. And so this, my studies and the students in particular helped me to question my entire life, even my beliefs. Um, I even uh, felt uh, intuitively that maybe I could find answers to my questions if I traveled to the Middle East. During this crisis, a key event happened. Um, I, I had a dream, like a vision, that that's exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be traveling to the Middle East, working on the interfaith peace process, uh, organizing dialogues and demonstrations, as I do today. Uh, yes, but your memoir revolves around Morocco, no, not the Middle East. Exactly. Um, I actually didn't have enough money to take a plane. It would have been much easier to take a plane from Paris and Middle East, three hours. I didn't have the money. Uh, I, I had enough to buy a plane ticket. I sold everything. I'm not a plane ticket, a train ticket. And sold everything and took a train down one of these uh, choo-choo trains all the way down to the border of Spain uh, and to, and with the idea, the itinerary was to get into North, go across North Africa, maybe a year later, uh, hitchhike, uh, and uh, tr work on the way uh, to make a living on my way to the Middle East. But you never arrived in the Middle East. No, uh, in fact, um, I, uh, w the, 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 uh, in Dans l'Homme de Moisine, uh, the, the main part of the story begins at this point, the great the saga of living in the streets. I'm living in the streets of Casablanca. I got as far as Ca Casablanca, Morocco. I'm living in the streets, and um, I met some people who invited me into a mosque. And there they said I could learn Arabic and uh, about, I could learn about Islam. Uh, and, and this place I entered into on the outskirts of Casablanca was like there was a high ceiling and the, um, the birds were flying in the rafters. It was like a, like a paradise. But where's the parents misleading? Well, um, it turns out that this paradise was inhabited by an extremist group, and I wasn't free to leave. In fact, it's, uh, after a week of praying and learning Arabic, the door was locked and there were guards in front. And uh, then panic struck as I realized I was imprisoned, and I kind of had to balance between the panic and this false feeling of security. What did this cult want from you? It was clear. Uh, the Imam uh, spoke to me, tried to calm me down as I was uh, quite panicked over being held against my will. Calm me down and says, we, uh, you know, it was clear that they wanted to convert me to this extremist form of Islam so I could turn around and recruit for them in Europe and in the US. So did you convert? Well, not at first. Um, I had many arguments with uh, the Imams and the uh, Islamic gurus, especially over the submission of women, the, the treatment of women in their communities. You said you were able to resist conversion. How? Well, I, I think what helped me, even though this took place 30 years ago, mind you, 1978, um, made, it's all chronicled in Don L'Homme de Moisine, I think what really helped me to resist the, the brainwashing techniques was my knowledge of other religions and the fact I'd focused on the common denominators among them that gave me strength to keep my distance, to, 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 to be objective, which I focused on during my meditations, but secretly while I was inside the mosque. Did you feel you were in danger? 
Well, um, because um, I questioned the treatment of women and other uh, uh, principles that, uh, uh, that their, their interpretation of Islam, uh, were, were, they were giving me with respect to their interpretation, and uh, the fact I wouldn't convert right away, they put me on trial inside the mosque. Um, and they also accused me of being a Zionist spy there to interfere with their Back to Islam movement. Uh, now, the, the, um, the danger was clear. They could choose uh, the, uh, the sentence, which could, could have been execution. They um, uh, acquitted me of these charges. Uh, but um, uh, after an inquisitory uh, hearing inside the mosque, uh, but I still wasn't free to go. Now, finally, um, I took a trip uh, with, the, uh, with a couple members of the sect to the south of, uh, of Morocco, and we stayed in a small village. And that night, in our lodging, one of the members of the sect warned me that um, if, if I were to look at the women in the village, um, that would be uh, prohibited and cause problems. Well, the next day I just uh, left uh, just for a few minutes where we were staying and, and I watched women carrying clothes on their head to the river to wash. That night uh, we, we got a visit in our lodging in the place we were staying by a whole group of angry men uh, apparently be, because I had looked at their women and uh, they really wanted to hurt me I think, and li or lynch me, and the members of the sect had, had difficulty in convincing them to change their plan. Did the cult allow you to live freely? Uh, it, you know, I, the only way out were, was to escape. So, how did you escape? Well, um, it took me three weeks in particular. I mean, I was inside for about two months, but th a three-week period, I was, it took me to figure out how to do that, and it was a period of great suspense and frustration because it wasn't sure I was going to succeed. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I, I think it's, it's just, it, it's kind of delicate to recount this part of Dans l'homme de Moisine because it was right at the end. It's a decisive part of the book uh, to those that might want to read the book. It's like being in a movie, you know, and someone sitting next to you trying to tell you what the end of the movie is before the end of it. It's, it's a kind of spoiler. Yeah, it kind of spoils the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us why we should read the book? Now this, this I, I first of all had no desire to, um, to share this story with anyone. I, I, wrote, I wrote it over and over again for almost 30 years just so I wouldn't forget what, I, what I'd learned. But I think what I can uh, contribute to readers is it, it is a unique spiritual path and secondly it's about Islamism fanatic Islam but inside the walls recounted by someone inside as opposed to most of the books written about this subject and thirdly or I, I, I you know it, it can reveal some of the very um, the subtle techniques for brainwashing and finally, I think this uh, receipt, this memoir, can um, en you know, encourage readers to find their own path in their own way. Did this experience have a direct impact uh, on your life today? Well, um, it, you know, 25 years after my escape from Morocco, I finally got to my destination, finally got to Israel and Palestine. It turned out that this vision I had was a true vision, and ever since 2005 I've been organizing dialogues and demonstrations for peace in Israel and on the other side of the wall in Palestine. So, do you have any events scheduled? Yes, in fact, uh, L'Espace Amaton, which um, it is a great place, just not far from here, uh, 20, uh, uh, 21 bis Rue des Écoles, we will have a great event uh, from 7 to 9, um, it's a, again, uh, it's on the, the 22nd of May, and there will be Moroccan music there, there will be food, and I'll have a little presentation about the book, so the, whole, the entire public is invited, and it's completely free. You also have an event uh, at uh, the University of Paris West. Right, uh, where I'm a, 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 a teacher, a professor, 
um, at University of Paris, Paris, we have scheduled an event. It will be the 14th of May, starting from 5, 5, 5 to 8 o'clock, uh, in the Salle des Commissions, in the law faculty, and the entire public is invited as well. Probably most people that will show up for that are teachers and administrative assistants, and, uh, and we should have fun there at the university as well. And it's all free. Finally, uh, where can people find the book? Uh, the book, and thanks to L'Armaton, is found literally everywhere. Uh, it's uh, on the list of FNAC, uh, the, the, the most important really bookstore in all of, of, of France. Uh, other databases, it's in, uh, on L'Amazon, it's on the L'Armaton website, and I've created a website as well. And you can find uh, all the information about the book, including my email, which is Frank Fro, F R A N K, F is in Frank, R O, at AOL.com. And I hope to hear from, from you. Uh, you don't have to agree with, with what I've said, or even after you've read my book, or what, what I've written. I'd like to hear from, from, from those who have read the book, or, or those that endeavor to read it. Um, and uh, you'll find out about the book on the website, which is www. Frank Romano, F R A N K R O M A N O, uh, Maroc, Maroc, M A R O C dot WordPress, W O R D P R E S S dot com. Thank you. Thank you.